If you're buying a franchise, the legal documents can be overwhelming. In this video, find out how to review the FDD in 10 minutes or less. An FDD is an essential part of the franchise buying process. It manages the business relationship between the franchisor and the franchisee. And remember, while an FDD may be intimidating, every one of the approximate 800,000 franchise businesses that are open in the US have signed one. My suggestion is still, before you sign an FDD, a franchise attorney should review the document so you're aware of what you're going to sign. However, the fully blown attorney review isn't warranted until you're about 90% sure you wanna move forward with that brand. If you are in the discovery process and you would like to do a review of the FDD on your own, then you're gonna to wanna to do a quick skim. Hit the most important parts. Here are the top five topics you should review, and this should all take you under 10 minutes. A quick search tip for Mac users, if you hit Command F, and for PC users, if you hit Control F, that's gonna be a search bar that will allow you to search that FDD much quicker. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to search is item 19. Type in item 19 in your search bar, scroll down into the document. This is where the franchisor is listing out things like profitability, things like sales numbers, KPIs, from both franchise and corporate location. So of course, we're gonna to wanna to find profitability. We're also gonna to wanna to find top line sales. Write those down somewhere because I'm gonna ask you to reference back to them later. Next, you're gonna look into the P&L. Most franchisors will list out a profit and loss statement. You're gonna to wanna to look for any key expenses that may be missing. So for example, if you know there's a royalty as part of your expenses, but it's not showing up here, take that into account. Also, how do you plan on managing the business? Do you plan on having a manager run the business for you? If you do, is that showing up in the profit and loss statement for some type of estimate that you should pay your manager? Take all of these things into mind as you're reviewing both sales and profitability inside your item 19. If you are looking at a franchise business that has no item 19, that just means you're gonna have to spend significantly more time inside of validation, talking to existing franchisees, trying to understand the profitability, the sales and the key expenses of the business. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do in the item 19 is look into the total number of locations that are listed. This sometimes will be found in the footnotes at the bottom or in the headers. Now, what you wanna look for here is how many total locations have been open over a year and how many of those are listed in the number. So for example, if you're looking at a franchisor that's got 100 locations that have been open over a year and they're only showing 70 of those in the numbers, you're gonna to wanna to ask the franchisor why 30 of them are missing. And if anything at all seems out of the ordinary, make sure you keep that on a separate piece of paper so you can ask that to the franchisor and in validation. Well, there you go. We already got one section done. The next section we're gonna wanna look at is the item seven. So type item seven in your search bar, scroll up to that part of the document. The item seven is gonna show you the estimated low compared to the estimated high end of the initial investment to get the franchise open. What you're trying to do here is better understand where you're gonna fall in the investment and ensure that you're gonna have access to the funds needed to open this franchise. So let's talk about a few things that might drive the difference between the low investment and the high investment. First thing you're gonna to wanna to think about is, is this a business that requires a retail space? If it is, look into the section where they have things like rent or build out. Many times we're gonna have a wide gap of those sections because leasing space in New York is significantly different than leasing space in North Dakota and both have to be allocated in the high and the low of the item seven. The next thing you wanna think about is, is there equipment that can be leased or purchased? Many times you'll see a franchisor that requires equipment to both show a leased option, which is gonna be on the low end, typically just requiring some sort of small down payment and then monthly payments. And then you're gonna see on the high end, the purchase option for that equipment. So depending on how much equipment or inventory is in the business, you might see a significant gap in that part of the item seven. Back to retail, what about build out cost, right? Again, contractors in certain parts of the country are gonna be significantly more expensive than contractors in other parts. So franchisors at times will allocate that for the low and the high end of the investment. If you're considering a home-based franchise, those franchisors may show both a low end for somebody that's gonna be working from a home office to a high end, somebody that may choose to lease a space. Even though it's not required in the business, many times franchisors will show both options, which will drive a gap in the low and the high end of the initial item seven. So again, when you were looking at the item 19, I asked you to write down both your sales and profitability numbers from the item 19. Now look at what you think your estimate is going to be for startup cost. Are you going to have a lease? Are you going to have build out? Are you gonna have inventory? How are you gonna purchase that inventory? What are your options for office space? Whatever it might look like for you, come up with an estimated number and then look at your item 19. 
typically from here, we want to start thinking a little bit about what's the return on your investment. And are you comfortable with that return on investment? I would encourage you to look for franchise concepts that can show you a return on your investment in five years or less is probably something I would be looking for myself. And I would want to see a net profit number of at least 15% after I've paid a manager. If I'm getting 15% or lower before I've paid a manager, it's more like buying yourself a job. And that's not typically why you're looking to buy a franchise. If you can't accomplish these things, you might want to consider the franchise you're looking at because I promise you there's plenty others out there that will meet your expectations financially. Okay, next section we want to look at is item 15. This lays out how you are allowed to manage the business, right? You got to think about things like, are you going to run it yourself or do you plan to have someone else run it for you? Do you have full-time hours, part-time hours available to do this? If you're planning to run the business yourself full-time, it's most likely that you're not going to have any challenges at all. Franchisors typically love it when the owners are running the business themselves. However, if you plan to have somebody else run the business for you, a manage the manager scenario, there's a few things that you want to look for. For example, does the manager need to have any special licenses, any special training? If the manager is required to have ownership, if hiring a manager requires training at the corporate office, anything that doesn't align with your plan for management of the business should be discussed with the franchisor. Okay, on to the fourth section that we're gonna look at. Now this is gonna be a dual section. We're looking at item six and item 11, fees and franchisor responsibilities. Now, when you think about fees, remember, fees should be a good thing, not a bad thing. They are designed to leverage group buying power, proven vendors, franchisor experience and what works, etc. Fees are your way of paying down your learning curve to cash flow. But the key to your fees is that you receive more value than what you put in. Meaning, if you own your own independent business and you paid the same amount to the vendors as you pay to the franchisor, you couldn't duplicate what you get from the franchisor. If the franchisor can't provide this, then they're not doing their job as a franchisor. I'm gonna give you an exercise to follow. Pull out a piece of paper and write down the following. Pull open the item six and on the left-hand side of the page, write down the fees you are specifically going to pay to the Zor. If you pay a third party, don't write it down. So excluded fees would be marketing agencies, accountants, insurance providers. This is not what goes here. What I want you to write down are fees paid directly to the franchisor in exchange for support services. These are usually variable fees, meaning a percentage of sales or a fee per lead. Examples of these are gonna be your royalties, your technology fee, your brand fund or marketing fee, whatever they call it, call center, et cetera, whatever they are. I don't want you to focus on flat fees here. So we're gonna ignore things like franchise fees, training fees, initial store design fees. You've already reviewed your item seven and you've looked at your ROI. We just went through that exercise of determining if you were comfortable with your startup costs so no more actions are required here. Okay, now I want you to think back to the item 19 review and at the bottom of the left-hand side of the page, write down the average sales you saw in the item 19. So let's say it was $50,000 for the exercise. Then put your total variable percentage below that. For this, let's say it's 12%. Then multiply your sales by your variable percentage. So 50,000 times 12% equals $6,000 a month in possible fees that you would pay to the franchisor. Now hold that there. Then go back to your computer and look up the item 11. In the item 11, it's gonna show you everything that you're gonna get in support from the franchisor. And you should list it all right here. So on the left-hand side of the page, you're gonna have your monthly expense. And on the right-hand side of the page, you are going to have a list from the FDD of everything the franchisor says that they are gonna to provide to you. So now we're going to compare the two sides. Look at the left-hand side of the page to the right-hand side of the page and decide if you could get the same value from your own business for that amount or less. If you say, yes, I could get the same amount of things or support for that fee, then I would encourage you to look for a new franchisor. The whole idea is that for what you pay from your franchisor, they provide more to you than what you could get on your own. Now here's a sidekick tip. Things that you wanna look out for are percentage ranges. For example, if the brand fund says one to 3% and they tell you, don't worry about it, today it's 1%, just know that at any time, that fee can go up at the franchisor's discretion. They're typically gonna to wanna to justify it with additional value to you, but know that is out of your hands. Also, look for words that say up to. Even if a franchisor is not charging the full amount today, be sure you know what your fees could go up to, again, at their discretion. 
hey, we're cruising. We're all the way down to the fifth section now. Now we wanna look at item 20 and the franchisor agreement, exhibit D or E. This is gonna show you total locations and royalty growth. Let me tell you more. You probably wanna be part of a growing franchise. Growth means others have gone through this process and decided it was worth it. This is a kind of external validation process. However, you need to look beyond just location growth. Location growth is the first thing we want to look at though, and you can find this in the item 20. Whenever reviewing an item 20, I like to specifically pay attention to not only total growth, but let's look at terminations. Let's look at non-renewals. If the franchisor is terminating franchise rights or franchisees are voluntarily choosing not to renew their franchise agreement, that's something that you want to dig into. I'd also suggest you take a glance at sold but not open locations. This is not necessarily a bad thing. In fact, if it's a great brand, this will almost always be a large number. At one point, Jimmy John's, Orange Theory, Dunkin' Donuts, Planet Fitness, Crumble Cookie, whatever, they all were fast growing brands showing significant numbers of sold but not open locations. So again, this might just be a sign of a fast growing great brand, but what you wanna look into is does the franchisor have the experience, the team and the resources needed to keep up with that growth. You don't wanna get lost in the shuffle. Next, and more important than location growth, is the secret spot I like to go to. It's usually gonna be in the Exhibit D or the Exhibit E in the franchise agreement. Once you find it, there should be a table showing the last three years of financials for the franchisor. In that section, look down the left-hand side and look for royalty revenues. Royalties are a much better indication of system health and growth. You don't wanna sign with just a system that is adding new locations. Royalty growth over three years will be a better indicator if existing locations have been growing. You care much more about mature location sales than a brand that has just been adding new locations. If mature locations are growing, this shows the business systems have improved and that is the best sign of a quality franchisor. Okay, maybe you got it done in 10 minutes, maybe you didn't, maybe it was a little longer. But if you were considering multi-unit ownership, I've got one more bonus section I want you to take a look at. This can be found across two items. Again, we want to look at item six and item 12, other fees and territory. If you're buying a multi-unit business, franchisors will usually have minimum requirements for you. They don't want to sell territories that are never developed. They are in the royalty business and underperforming territories hurt their bottom line. Because of this, they will add minimum performance requirements. So as you consider multi-unit ownership, take a look at things like your development schedule. How long do you have to open future locations? Inventory or equipment requirements. How much additional inventory or equipment are you required to buy? Employees. When you open future locations, how many new employees do you need? Marketing spend. Are you responsible for a larger spend to support more territories? And minimum royalties. How are your minimum royalties affected as you buy more territory? If you put yourself in the shoes of the franchisor, you would probably require these things as well. And when these are designed well, they will lead to better performing locations and more profitability for you. Just be sure you're aware of what they are so you're not caught off guard. That's it. Hopefully this video offered you a quick skim of an FDD review. And again, remember this document has been used for every franchise business open in America. It may be intimidating, but the good documents are designed to protect both you and the franchisor.